This is the Celebrity Afterlife Report Podcast. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report. The only show on the internet that gives you the -the up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. I am your host, the Celebrity Medium. Let's do this thing! For several weeks now, we have been following the story of former televangelist Jerry Falwell and his attempt to construct a sign that says Holy Land, similar in size to the famous Hollywood sign, on a hill overlooking one of the larger cities in the next world. Now, many residents of homes near the site Falwell had chosen for the sign objected to the plan, saying it would block their view, and that it was unnecessary as there are no formal religions in the afterlife. Now, despite the outcry against his proposed project, Falwell vowed to keep trying to get the sign erected. This week, Falwell may have enlisted another famous preacher to his cause. Robert Schuller was famous on the earthly plane as the founder of the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. He hosted the TV show The Hour of Power from the All Glass Church for many years. This past week, Schuller transitioned to the next world. In the medium-sized crowd waiting to welcome him, Along, of course, with self-appointed greeter to the stars, James Brown, Jerry Falwell was on hand to meet Schuler. According to my sources, no sooner had Schuler arrived than Falwell walked briskly up to him and grabbed his hand to shake it. Schuler, like many people, seemed a bit do- disoriented upon arriving in his new existence. Despite that, however, I'm told Falwell immediately began to fill Schuler in on the story of his proposed sign. My sources say it was obvious that Falwell was trying to get Schuler to help him move the project forward. Falwell uh, apparently hopes to use Schuler's powers of persuasion to get the public to change its mind about the sign. I'm told that Schuler seemed to be getting his bearings as Falwell went on and on and on about the sign and why he feels it's important to get it erected. At the end of the conversation, the two men shook hands and parted, Falwell apparently making the well-known sign for, Call me, as Schuller walked away. Schuller, I'm informed, had a wry smile on his face and was seen shaking his head slightly. My main source on this story took that as a sign that Schuller was somewhat bemused by Falwell lobbying him so hard immediately upon his arrival. It will be interesting to see if Schuler joins Falwell in his quest, and we'll keep an eye on this story as it develops. You may not recognize the name Gary Dahl, but you almost certainly know the gift he gave to mankind back in 1975. Gary Dahl, a freelance copywriter at the time, was the creator of the Pet Rock. Sitting on a stool in a bar, Dahl heard some other patrons discuss the relative merits of their pets. He joked that he had the perfect pet, a rock. It didn't need to be walked or fed, and it would listen if you commanded it to stay. The joke gave him the idea to sell rocks in boxes with air holes in them like a pet carrier. The rocks were accompanied by a booklet explaining the care and feeding of the owner's new pet. As silly as the idea sounds, the pet rock made Dahl a millionaire. Gary Dahl transitioned to the afterlife the other day. And there wasn't a big crowd waiting to greet him when he arrived. Only two men were there. One was, you guessed it, James Brown, who welcomed Dahl to the next world. The other was Thomas Edison. The man credited with the invention of the light bulb, the phonograph, and many other items we now take for granted. According to a source who witnessed the encounter between the two inventors, Edison introduced himself to Dahl, who seemed stunned to meet him. 
Edison went on to explain that he admired all inventors and he was especially excited to meet Dahl, who would become rich by selling something anyone could pick up off the ground for free. According to my source, Edison told him, if I had known it was so easy to sell rocks, I wouldn't have worked so hard to come up with the light bulb. The encounter ended with the two men promising to keep in touch once Dahl got settled in to his new existence. Several weeks ago, I reported that Kurt Cobain was planning on having his then-wife-to-be, Anna Nicole Smith, become the lead singer in a new version of his band, Nirvana. At the time, many Afterlife fans felt that Cobain was letting the little head do the thinking for the big head, so to speak. As for his reaction to that, the stubborn Cobain insisted that Smith was a woman of many talents and said he was going to go ahead with his plans. Since then, he has made good on his word. Launching a tour with his now wife on the microphone, sometimes in duet with Cobain. The early reviews of the tour have been, shall we say, uh, less than positive? One reviewer referred to the band as Novana, calling Smith, quote, a blow-up doll disguised as a singer, unquote. Cobain, never one to back down from a fight, read the review on stage at the band's next show, and in an apparent attempt at comedy, sang, I got you, babe, with Smith. According to my sources, the crowd didn't seem to appreciate the joke and began booing. Cobain threw down his microphone in disgust and walked off stage, leaving the rest of the band to continue the show without him. Something tells me this is not going to end well. As rock fans know, the band Leonard Skinner has had a rough go of it. 35 years ago, a plane crash ended the earthly plane existences of three of the band's members. Now, since then, a few other Skinner members have also transitioned to the next world. Over this past weekend, Bob Burns, a founding member and one-time drummer of the iconic Southern rock band, died in a car crash. Friday night in Georgia. His arrival in the afterlife was greeted by a large crowd of Skinner fans along with, much to Burns' surprise, all of his former bandmates who now reside in the next world. According to sources who witnessed the happy reunion, Burns barely had time to register what had happened to him when his old friends were inviting him to become a member of a reconstituted version of Skinner set to tour the afterlife. Once he got over his shock, Burns laughed and said, Hell yeah! Let's hit the road, boys! The fans in attendance, I'm told, cheered the news. Okay, that slams the lid on this edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report. Please come back next week for another roundup of Up to the Minute Gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities, and please spread the word that the report is available on iTunes. I am the Celebrity Medium. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. To ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity, call 818 818- Three, my dream. Eight one eight three, my dream. Eight one eight three six nine thirty seven thirty two.